Om Maha Ganapataye Namaha. In this video, I'm going to share some very profound concepts and teachings that Dr. Bly has shared recently about how you can change your life and who you really are and what it is that you have done to confine yourself to a limited reality and how to get out of it. The intention at the end of this video, once you finish watching it, is for you to come away with some very profound understanding of how you can transform your life and what you can focus on to make that a very, very fast and painless process. So let me dive into this and explain uh, the teaching from Dr. Ply, and then I'm going to break it down a little bit. So one, what he said is, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing now, I don't remember the exact quote verbatim, was that what we have done as our identity, as we have built this, uh, almost like we have built a filter on top of the soul. Now, the soul represents here our unlimited nature, our God awareness, our God identity. And we have, on top of that, built a sort of prison for ourself. A, we have built limitation on top of that unlimited or delimited or unlimited expression of God. Because every, every person is every being, even Dr. Ply says, even the soul of an ant is God. The soul itself, if you can imagine the ocean, and if you can split that ocean up into trillions and trillions of drops of water, each drop of water is the same water. It's a fractal of the ocean. And once that water is dropped back into the ocean, it becomes the ocean, and there's no difference between the two. We are all the, similar like this. We are all fractals. We all appear to be fractals of the one being or one intelligence, the one awareness that is here, that they call as God, they call as Brahman, uh, they call whatever. There's many different names and traditions. So what we're doing here when we're talking about getting enlightened, enlightenment is nothing that you gain. Enlightenment is a matter of discovery. See, that's why Jesus says the kingdom is within. That's why in the Hindu pantheon, uh, the way that they have identified the Holy Trinity, they have the creator Brahma, they have the sustainer Vishnu, and they have the destroyer or transformer, because nothing's actually destroyed, it's always just transformed, who is Shiva. And of the three, Shiva is the one who is associated with giving enlightenment. In fact, the Siddhas say that it is Shiva himself who has to essentially sign off that you get enlightened. That is the principle behind the Enlightenment. And now, isn't that very interesting that it's the destroyer and transformer? It's not the creator. You're not creating Enlightenment. You are destroying or transforming the filters you have put on top of your soul to create an unlimited identity. And there are many unlimited identities. And this is the concept, or this is what all the gods and goddesses, or the angels, or the ascended masters are representing. In the past video, in a past video, I've given an example of if you can imagine God like a diamond. And every on the diamond, there are these all these perfected, beautiful facets on the diamond. They all have their different shapes, they all have their unique look to them. But they're all part of the diamond, and they're all identified with the diamond. They just are expressing themselves in a different way. The very, if you can imagine, the very uh, surface level filter has a slight little a uniqueness to it, but it is a perfected filter, if you will. For example, you have the archetype Lakshmi or Srimbrzee. Srimbrzee represents a perfected identity of wealth consciousness, one who is at one with wealth consciousness, and as a result, they create the effect of wealth consciousness around them. Wealth consciousness here, the way that I would define wealth consciousness, in one word, is fulfillment. That's why uh, the full moon, which is a moon of abundance, it's a, it's a principle, a mind principle, because a moon corresponds to the principles of different principles of the mind. The full moon principle represents a fullness. And that fulfillment that is cultivated within is the outside world is simply an effect of that. And that effect represented, is represented as wealth fulfillment, where you have essentially two types of fulfillment. You have one type of fulfillment that manifests itself as a different one. You have the 
inner fulfillment, which is the inner joy, the, the fulfillment that you can uh, be in a place, you can have no clothes like these siddhas. You can be living on the street and be completely blessed out, completely fulfilled. You know everything. You can do everything. You are aligned yourself and identified with your God identity. You don't need anything. If you choose to remain that way, nothing external. There is no pleasure that could touch or hold a candle to the joy, bliss, and fulfillment you feel within. Here, Lakshmi is representing a dual uh, fulfillment, where she's representing what Dr. Ply calls as a 200% life. 100% spiritual fulfillment, which is simply referring to this subtle fulfillment, the inner fulfillment, the inner landscape, the kingdom within. Once you own that kingdom within, then the 200% life model is the 100% fulfillment is the, the other 100% is the material fulfillment, the pleasure fulfillment, which is not giving you happiness because you are already established in that. It is simply enhancing. It is simply an expression of you. So after all, if you have to live in this world, why not live like a king? The problem is that people who are rich, who are uh, prone to depression and very miserable, is because they have manifested the pleasure fulfillment, the external fulfillment, but the, the trick here is, or the, the catch, is that doesn't give you the inner fulfillment. It is actually the inner fulfillment. And once you have the inner fulfillment, all the pleasures of the world become that much more enhanced. Your senses are on a whole new level. Your appreciation is on a whole new level. So manifesting fulfillment with the Shreem Brzee Mantra is something you may want to look into. Now, the purpose of this video, or the intention I want to get back to, is the concept of what you're trying to do, what it is you are trying to do when you are on the path of so-called spirituality, or the spiritual path. What it means is, you are trying to drop, or at least transform your ego. Your ego is your identity. You want to create a perfected identity. Because they say to exist in this world, you do need an ego at some level. Otherwise, you will be completely spaced out and not able to function in this reality. So you need a... a I like the way that Satguru uh, gives an analogy for this. It's a very beautiful way of explaining it. And I hope it helps you uh, understand it too. He compares it to an earthen pot. Now, when they take or make earthen pots, they take some mud and they arrange it into a shape of a pot. Now, when they want to make that pot, so it's something that we're used to where you can uh, touch it and it won't break. It won't, uh, you know, you can't push your thumb into it, for example, in mud, a wet mud anymore and put a thumbprint. It's, it's a hard pot now, like a bowl or something or a mug. They have to go and fire or burn it. They burn it so it becomes hard. What Sadhguru talks about is you want to create your, ide your identity or your ego so that it's just the mud pot that you can easily, if, if you drop it into water, it will be able to easily dissolve. As opposed to having a burned pot where it's so fixed that even when you put it into water, it remains the same fixed identity. So he compares it to this, and the way that I relate to this is, you have this surface level identity that you maintain. But at any second, if you want to drop into a unity consciousness or God consciousness in a meditation or just in general, which is the concept of yoga of yoking your conscious mind to your unconscious, so you can easily, why do you want to do this? Because then you can manifest. Because you have to understand, this is a very important thing. Your intelligence, wisdom, the inner joy, the happiness, this is a byproduct of your soul seeping through into your identity. These aren't things that you are creating. These aren't things that you are cultivating outside. This is a part of your your soul intelligence coming in. You are drawing any intelligence that you've been able to make into your conscious identity is a, is a part of your soul manifesting. Any of that inner happiness that you feel that doesn't require uh, any external stimulus such as food, drugs, drink, um, pleasures of any kind. Any of that that's able to come through is a taste of your soul. And even the yogis, there's one yogi talks about all these external pleasures. And by the way, I'm not putting them down. I want to be very clear about this. I'm not putting down, ex I'm not suggesting you become a renunciate. Absolutely not. I am suggesting you root or establish yourself in the inner joy and appreciate the external pleasures as well. But don't 
allow yourself to be lost in those and think that those are what's going to make it. Uh, you becoming a billionaire is going to make you happy. It's not. And if you've ever manifested anything, you understand that it's nice, but it's just something. After all, it's not. I'm still the same person who's driving the car, who's living in the house, who's in the private plane, who's in the yacht. It's still me in the thing. While it's very nice to have that around, I have to be fulfilled on the inside in order to even be able to enjoy that. Because even rich people, they can't enjoy their wealth because they aren't established themselves in a state of joy, which is a state of soul intelligence. So if you're able to do that, you'll be able to manifest what you want to do. And after all, Dr. Pye talks about God is not poor. So we have this dichotomy of spiritualists and materialists one side. No, God has all the wealth in the world. All this is God's. They own all this. This is theirs. This is part of them. It is them. So you have to align. So what Dr. Bai talks about is don't chase the money. Go and chase God. Go get God first and you will get the money as a byproduct. He talks about some of the secrets of Shreem is How Shreem is able to manifest the wealth. Why it's the ultimate wealth. Uh, excuse me, wealth manifesting mantra is because it establishes you in an inner joy, in a space of pure faith, which he defined as utter positivity, optimism, compassion, love. This is what is the bedrock, or the foundation, that you build a life of fulfillment internally and externally around you. So what so what you want to do to build this identity, whether it's Shreemers or any, you don't just have to use Shreemers, you can use any archetype. Use an archetype. Archetypes are not, let me just show you one here that I have because today's Tuesday and it's kind of just speaking to me. Here's Mudiga. So he's an archetype too. So you have all these different archetypes. You have Mudiga. You have Hanuman, the monkey face god. You have the horse face archetype, Hayagriva. And these are all principles personified. You, of course, have uh, Ganapati as well. Okay, so you have these different forms. And these forms are a language. These forms personify mantras. They personify principles of yourself. Because they are your soul. This is the thing. You aren't limited. This is why you have to get out of this mindset of, I'm jo John Doe. I'm Jane Doe. This is who I am. This is what I believe. This is what I feel. This is simply what you have chosen to identify with. You can choose to identify with something else. And what I'm suggesting here, what the yogis and sitters are suggesting, is use these archetypes to identify with. Because these archetypes are perfected personifications. Now you may be drawn to certain archetypes because you may have a natural resonance as part of your, your individual soul may have a natural affinity or connection to a certain archetype, as the one mystic, Dr. G Mitchell Gibson, talks about, is we are, and after all, I believe all the yogis talk about this, well, we are all children of God. And he says specifically, we're all children of different gods. So when you express yourself, when you blossom to your full potential, you will take on the characteristics of that God naturally because you are a, a child of that God. They seeded you into this world and you become that. Now, you become ultimately the Godhead itself but these archetypes are bridges into that because they are identified with Godhead. And they simply have chosen to express themselves in different unique ways. Not to say that they're limited in any way. They happen to specialize in certain things. That's what it means. So uh, use archetypes. Um, the way that you can use archetypes obviously is the mantra. Their form. You want to wear that archetype like a costume. And that is done through your imagination. And your imagination is not a, a fake thing. Imagination is real. Imagination is a part of your mind because you have to understand that the mind itself or the is an, is collapsing particles, but before these particles will be collapsed that we experience through five senses, is unlimited potential. Everything in this world is a product of imagination. We have certain norms, of course, that we have all subscribed to, that this is a these are the laws of physics, this is how it works, this is what it is. These are things that we have subscribed and been conditioned to. Our ancestors have been conditioned to. And as a result, we have genetic influences coming within that are reinforcing this. And we are also being reinforced all these concepts externally through our media and all the authority figures. Don't, don't get it twisted. This is all something that we have subscribed to on a subconscious and a conscious level. 
But the fact of the matter is, there is no, there is no, uh, nothing that can't be done. There are yogis, in, for example, in Siddhas, they're talking about writing about how they are flying in the sky. No wings, just flying about. Doing all these siddhis, or supernormal powers, where they can make themselves as small as an atom. Or there's stories about them making themselves where their ankle is at the level of the sun. They're so tall. They're so humongous. Where they can... Um, become invisible. They can do all kinds of different things, anything you can imagine. So these superheroes, these comic book heroes, they had those in ancient India way long ago. Look at the archetype Hanuman. Hanuman was flying around in the sky, picking up mountains, doing impossible things like Superman, where he was getting lit on fire. The flames couldn't burn him. All kinds of incredible, changing his size to be enormous. Where he's so big, he's jumping off the mountain. As he jumps it, he's crushing the mountain partially to fly across the ocean and do all these incredible, miraculous feats. They had superheroes a long time ago. All these archetypes are the superheroes. So you want to like, go and identify yourself. Wear them. Visualize yourself. Constantly hold on to the imagination. Whether you're seeing them in your mind's eye. Or you are visualizing yourself with an elephant head or a monkey face or a horse face. This is a symbol. It's a language. It's changing the way your brain is on a practical level. The brain, what I talked about in the past video, is an effect of your consciousness. It's an effect of your inner space. You have the Nama Shivaya rep representing the five elements. The space principle is rooted here in the brain. The brain is a reflection of that space principle, which is your intelligence, the information that you have access to. So holding on to these archetypes, these symbols, is a language that unconscious is a, the, the language that it responds to is particularly as symbols, also sounds. So use their sounds, use their symbols. Identify yourself. You have to shift. Remember what we were talking about at the beginning of this video. What you have done is you have built this filter on top of an identity, which you can imagine like a sun is your soul. And you put like sunglasses and a filter on top of it, so it's changing the color of it. It's changing the way that the lights reflect it. Are refracted. So you have like a prism and it shoots out different things, uh, different lights. Or you have like a projector if you want to imagine a vision as a, an analogy. And that projector is putting it through slides and you can see uh, images on the screen. And these are certain colors, certain shapes, and people and environments. This is essentially what you've done. You have to identify yourself with that soul part of you. And if you want to have an identity in this world, use an archetype who represents the perfected identities that we have access to, the superhuman, super aspects of consciousness. Visualize their form, use their mantra, identify with them, go and read their stories. Reading their stories, Dr. Pai calls as mythotherapy. It is a direct communication. Your soul understands, and it's an activation that's going on within when you read their stories, their birth stories. Observe their times and their birthdays. Their birthdays is when they are, when the uh, peak time is to birth that unconscious principle into your conscious awareness. Their times. When are they active? What are they more, most active? For example, Shreem Brzee is active during Venus times, Fridays, Venus auras, the full moon. Anuradha star is Lakshmi star. Uh, Lord Hanuman is Mars and also Saturn, Saturn times. Uh, Ganapati, uh, sun, sun times, Sunday, also Wednesdays. Also, Ganapati apparently is born according to the Siddha Amara Kavish Siddheshwara. Maha Ganapati was born in the Scorpio sign. He is also represented as Ketu. So look at these times and go and understand about your archetype and work with that archetype and keep focusing on the archetype. Bring your mind back to the archetype. I'm going to wrap this video up by saying uh, one addition that ties directly into this of what I shared in the past video about secrets of making your time valuable. The most valuable that you, way you can use your time, one of the most valuable ways that you can use your time, which remember, your money or the, the uh, return, the profit that you are getting is a reflection of your time, and your time is a reflection of your mind. So if you can change your mind, you can put all of this on autopilot. We're using your time in a very productive way, and as a result, being able to earn lots of money, being able to have the, the fruit of synchronicity and good luck in the right place, at the right time, opportunities are coming, you're having good time. It starts with your mind. So, the way that you spend your mind, the way that you spend your focus in particular, is reflecting the 
value that your time is going to be uh, perceived as or that you're going to be able to create out of your time. The higher the value of time, the more you are going to be using your mind in a profitable way, in a, in a nutshell. And the most profitable way that you can spend your focus is by constantly pulling it back into a mantra and your archetype. You're, the mantra itself is alive. It is the archetype. If you want to go further, use the symbols, whether that's the form of their archetype, whether you're seeing them in your mind's eye, you're imagining yourself as them, or maybe you're visualizing their symbols. For Hanuman, he's got his big mace, the Gada, which is a symbol of Hanuman. You have Ganapati, represented as the, the positive swastika, which starts at the right, not the Hitler one, which goes far, from the left first. Shrimbrzee, you have the lotus, the pink lotus flower, or you have the ultraviolet color. Their colors are very powerful, too. Highly recommend that. Using, put their brain, fill your brain with their color and the sound. So Shrimbrzee is ultraviolet eggplant, or the pink color. You have Ganapati as infrared, and so on and so forth. You can go and find this out from reading about their stories, which I also recommend you do as well. Spend your focus, and you will you will benefit by uh, enhancing the value of your time. Focus on, and remember, and keep into your awareness. You have built this identity, this filter, on top of your soul. You are not the filter, and you can change the filter. It is a choice that you are continuing to subscribe to, and to change the filter it requires a little bit of effort against the grain, so it may seem like nothing's happening at first, but out over time and the more consistent and, and committed you are to doing this, you will start to see your autopilot, your default state, will change naturally and organically. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, I would love to hear from you. Please leave a comment underneath this video. If you found this video, video valuable or useful in any way, please click the like button and also feel free to share it with others who you think would find it valuable too. As always, if you'd like to be notified for future videos, click the bell notification and subscribe below. God bless.